So what causes cataract in children? When I attempted to learn about this element as a student, I encountered a wealth of knowledge on the subject and there are undoubtedly so many causes for childhood cataract. We frequently become so engrossed in this material and we fail to truly take anything away from the literature. I'll therefore try to make it simpler for you today and by the end of the lecture, I'm sure you'll be able to recall and use a lot of this knowledge in your daily life. So together, let's explore the causes of pediatric cataract. Now, these cataracts are responsible for nearly 10% of vision loss in children worldwide and remains a challenging entity in the ophthalmological practice because of the need to identify, diagnose and manage the condition as early as possible in order to prevent amblyopia. So what is a pediatric cataract? Pediatric cataracts occur due to the disturbance in the normal growth of the lens. And therefore, we have two types of pediatric cataracts broadly. These are congenital cataract and developmental cataract. So what is a congenital cataract? When the disturbance in the lens growth occurs before birth, the child is actually born with a congenital cataract. These opacities are actually present at birth, but the cataract is usually diagnosed within the first year of life. And because the disturbance in lens growth occurs before birth, the opacities or the cataract is also limited to the embryonic and the fetal nucleus. Next, we have the developmental cataract. This occurs when there's disturbance in the lens growth from infancy to adolescence. And here, the opacities will involve the infantile nucleus and the adult nucleus. Along with that, sometimes even deeper parts of the cortex or the capsule. So that is one very important differentiation between congenital and the developmental cataract. So what causes cataract in children? Well, this is the extensive list of causes. But hey, wait, don't run away. I know, I know at first this might look too complicated and too much information, but we are here to help you to sort that extensive information into bite-sized concepts. So I'm Dr. Amrit and we are studying the etiology of pediatric cataracts. Now, before we start, just a quarter of people who watch our videos are actually clicking on the subscribe button. Well, that's not very motivating. So please make sure you subscribe and make our channel bigger so that the videos get bigger and so that we can bring more and more content for you. So now let's get started. Now, studying the etiology is very important because we want to avoid amblyopia. And before we start, it's very important to make a distinction whether the child has a unilateral cataract or the cataract is involving both the eyes, which is called a bilateral cataract. So first, let's talk about a unilateral cataract. Now, if the child has a unilateral cataract, the causes can be broadly classified into four types. These are the ocular anomalies and local dysgenesis of that eye, which has the cataract. Or it could be trauma to the eye or radiation exposure to the eye. And sometimes we just don't know why it's happening. So that cause is called an idiopathic cause. So quite easy, right? So unilateral pediatric cataracts, you should remember that it would not be wrong to say at this juncture that the unilateral cataracts are usually sporadic. That means there is no family history, no systemic disease, and the affected infants are otherwise healthy very very important so it's not inherited mostly not related to systemic disorders and not related to metabolic disorders also and therefore just by identifying whether the cataract is limited to one eye or is present in both the eyes you can actually exclude a lot of disorders like systemic disorders metabolic disorders and even heritable causes of the pediatric cataract now let us discuss these four causes one by one so first, what we are going to discuss are the ocular anomalies, which can cause the unilateral pediatric cataract. These are persistent fetal vasculature, posterior lenticonus, posterior segment tumors, posterior segment pathologies, and retinal detachments of any cause and sometimes even uveitis. Now, if the uveitis is unilateral, it will cause a unilateral pediatric cataract, but sometimes uveitis or the inflammation of the choroid can actually be present in both the eyes, and in those cases, we will have even a bilateral pediatric cataract. So, 
The first one that we'll discuss here is the primary persistent hyperplastic vitreous, which is abbreviated as PHPV. Now it is also referred to as the persistent fetal vasculature. So what is this persistent fetal vasculature? There's basically a failure of uh, these structures within the primary vitreous to regress with time. So basically what happens is that the primary vitreous gets replaced by the secondary vitreous. The primary vitreous actually has blood vessels and the secondary vitreous is basically clear. However, in a condition called persistent fetal vasculature or primary persistent hyperplastic vitreous, there is failure of these structures to actually regress with time. As you can see in the first picture, in PFV or primary hyperplastic uh, vitreous or primary persistent hyperplastic vitreous, because of the incomplete regression, you will see a fibrovascular stalk. Fibrovascular means that it also has fibrous tissues and also has vascular component, that means vessels in it. So this fibrovascular stalk will grow from the optic nerve or the area of the optic disc as can be seen in this picture and it goes right up to your posterior lens capsule. Now this leads to development of a white membrane behind the lens which can also lead to dense amblyopia. Now with time, the lens develops cataract as its nutrition will also be affected. Moreover, the membrane which is sitting right behind your posterior capsule undergoes contraction because ultimately it is fibrous tissue and we know that fibrous tissue basically contracts and because of that, the ciliary processes, we know they are attached to the posterior lens capsule and also at the equator. The ciliary processes are actually pulled forwards, to, drawn towards the center of the lens or drawn towards that membrane and now the ciliary processes will become visible as you can see by the red arrow in the second picture okay so this was your primary persistent hyperplastic vitreous first cause of ocular anomaly that leads to unilateral cataract and it is usually associated with a smaller eye as well which is called micro ophthalmos the next ocular condition that we discuss that can cause a unilateral cataract is basically a lenticunus. Now here I'm talking about the posterior lenticunus. Now posterior lenticunus is basically the bulging of the posterior part of the lens as you can see in the first picture and it is also associated with localized thinning and sometimes even absence of the posterior capsule in that area of the posterior lenticunus. Now, these cases are also unilateral. They are sporadic. And as I told you that, they are usually not associated with systemic disease. So if you would remember, I told you unilateral cataracts are not systemic. They're not, they're not inherited as well. So, however, you might say that we do know of systemic condition that can cause lenticunus and that condition is Stay tuned to find out in this video. Okay, we'll talk more about that. But remember that a unilateral lenticunus is usually sporadic and not associated with systemic disease. However, we can have systemic disease which can manifest as bilateral cataract as well. So what happens with age, this bulging will progressively increase and the lens cortex will now start opacifying and the type of cataract that we would see in this condition would be a posterior subcapsular opacification that is seen in the slit image and also in the third picture. So let us uh, actually try to discuss the type of cataracts also which are associated with particular etiology as we discuss these etiologies because that way it will become much, e uh, much more easier for us to understand the etiologies and associate them with the type of cataracts that is seen with them. Now another ocular anomaly is the lentiglobus. Now lentiglobus is a very rare condition. It is actually associated with a hemispherical bulge of the lens posteriorly. That means half of your lens is actually bulging posteriorly. So in lenticunus you have a localized bulge right as you can see here but in lentiglobus almost the entire hemisphere bulges posteriorly. Now the question is what type of cataract do you see here? The cataract that you see over here is a posterior polar cataract. Again, a unilateral uh, cataract, hemispherical deformity of the lens associated with posterior polar cataract, right? 
Now, one important clinical point that we must remember here is that we need to be very careful while operating the cataract cases with lenticonus or lenticlobus as they often have a defect in the posterior capsule. Okay, so be very, very careful. Now, now we have discussed ocular anomalies and local dysgenesis as the cause of unilateral pediatric cataract. So now let us move on to the various other posterior segment pathologies that can lead to cataract formation. Now basically any posterior segment pathology which means that the pathology which affects the retina, vitreous, choroid, which is severe enough to disrupt the lens metabolism can actually lead to development of the cataract, right? Now because the pathology is posterior, your cataract will also be a posterior cataract. Either it will be a posterior subcapsular cataract or a cataract involving the posterior cortex, okay? Now, now it could be an exudative disorder like the Coats disease or it could be your retinopathy of prematurity or it could be retinal detachment due to a plethora of conditions, okay? All these things can lead to a unilateral cataract formation. Of course, if you have bilateral retinal detachment because of a syndromic association, then definitely you will have bilateral cataract, right? So never ever forget to do your B-scan ultrasonography to diagnose these conditions. Obviously, the cataract would not let you examine the posterior segment easily by doing an indirect ophthalmoscopy. So make sure that you use other modalities of investigation. Now, the third cause that we'll discuss uh, regarding the unilateral pediatric cataract is the trauma or radiation exposure. So birth trauma, that means trauma that happens at the time of birth or delivery. Child abuse definitely is a leading cause of uh, uh, traumatic cataract. So sometimes when you don't find any reason, it's very important to, uh, you know, uh, have a suspicion of child abuse also in children who have unilateral cataracts and sometimes even bilateral cataracts. Then radiation exposure is one cause of unilateral cataract and even electric cataract is one. So let us now discuss all of these one by one. The first one that we'll discuss is a traumatic cataract or a rosette cataract, okay? So here, blunt or any concussional trauma to eyeball can lead to development of this characteristic cataract in the shape of a flower. As you can see in the second picture, it is more clear, okay? So this cataract is called a rosette cataract. Now, of course, always look for other signs of trauma as well to exclude all the other causes of similar looking cataract. For example, you can actually see over here in the first picture presence of zonular dialysis at 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock um, hours, you know, roughly. Okay, so that indicates that you're actually dealing with a traumatic cause of cataract. Because of the trauma, there will be break, breakdown of the zonules which are attached to the lens and that is called zonular dialysis. And you can see it from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the first picture. Also, in the last picture, you can actually see that there is a lens material which is coming out into the anterior chamber through a ruptured lens capsule. Again, one more picture, which is more classic of a rosette cataract or a traumatic cataract. You can see this developed uh, following a blunt trauma. Apart from blunt trauma, even a penetrating trauma can lead to cataract formation. In this picture, you can actually observe that the cataract formation is present at the entry side and there's a corresponding corneal tear, which is a white crescent that you can see on the cornea, which is labeled with a black arrow. Now, another uh, cataract that can develop is the one following a radiation exposure. Now, this basically happens because of the radiation acting directly on the dividing cells, okay? So, the radiation or the ionizing radiation basically acts on your uh, cells which have a higher growth potential or the cells which are rapidly dividing, right? So, these cells are actually present at the equator of the lens. So therefore, the radiation cataract also starts near the equator shortly after the radiation is given. And then later on, what happens is that it starts spreading and it's, it spreads to the posterior part of the lens in about one to two years of time as the equatorial cells actually migrate posteriorly. 
Now, technicians who have been inadequately protected or patients usually treated for malignant conditions near the eye are the ones who are usually affected with this radiation cataracts and such cataracts actually developed in workers who worked in you know atomic energy plants and also occurred among the survivors of atomic bombs released over japan in the second world war now they actually mature quite rapidly and progress uh, to developing almost a total opacification of the lens so here is an example of your ionizing radiation cataract you can see the cataract is quite dense and occupying mostly the posterior subcapsular location. Then we also have the electric cataract. If someone gets electrified, unfortunately, there is a passage of this high voltage current through the body. Now, this current basically damages the lens uh, cells, leading to cataract formation. And the cataract here usually starts as, you know, very fine dot-like opacities, which are present just below the capsule. And this will also mature quite rapidly. So here in this picture, what you see is punctate subcapsular opacity falling and uh, event where the patient uh, where the person was actually electrified unfortunately so that's it we discussed about the etiologies of unilateral cataract i hope you really enjoyed it and it made sense stay tuned for the next part on the etiologies of bilateral cataract thank you and have a nice